Hi, this is Jay Haskamp, and I'd like to welcome you to another Tech Talk by Frontier Precision. In today's session, we're going to look at the process of creating a new conventional or total station job in Trimble Access. A job organizes and stores the data that you collect. You must create a job before you can collect data in the field. So let's take a look at the steps on how to do this. First, in the main Trimble Access screen, we're going to select General Survey. Once in General Survey, you can see we have no current job either opened or created. So the first thing we need to do is to go to Jobs and then pick New Job. At the top of the screen, it asks for a job name. A job name can be up to 16 characters, including upper and lowercase letters and numbers. Also, to the right of the job name box, there's this little browse box with the folder symbol on it. If we tap this folder symbol, we can create a new folder. We will name this example 1. And this folder basically is acting as a subfolder now under our user folder in Trimble Data. So when I select it and hit OK, you can see now that my new job is going to go in the example 1 folder. This is a useful way to manage your job files in the field and also to sort your data as needed. Under the job name, we are going to type in example 1 for our name. And below we have our templates. By default, you will see default and last used job. The default template will set the units to meters and the coordinate system to scale of 1. Last used job will carry over the last coordinate system, units, and linked files, map, and feature code library settings from the last job that you accessed in the software. You can also create your own templates to predefine the coordinate systems, units, and so on, so you don't have to go back through and pick them every time. The next thing we need to look at is the coordinate system box. To change these settings, we're going to pick on the bar next to it, and you can see we have different options here. We have scale factor only, select from library, key and parameters, no projection, no datum, broadcast RTCM, and snake grid. We're only going to focus on two of these with working with total stations. The first one, scale factor only, means that we're working in a scale factor of one. What this means is our raw total station measurements that we take in the field is what is going to be used with no scaling to produce our coordinates. This is a typical workflow for total station only jobs that are not being combined with GPS. If we choose select from a library, we can select our standard coordinate systems that we would also use with GPS. However, if you're mixing total station data and GPS data, be wary of your coordinate system setting whether you're in grid or in ground to make sure that your inverses match with your total station measurements. One thing to also keep in mind when working with total stations is to never choose no projection, no datum. No projection, no datum works strictly with WGS84 lat long and height values and will not give you any coordinates when working with the total station. For this example, we're going to select scale factor only and leave our scale factor set to 1. The next step is to hit store. Now you can see once we've hit store, our coordinate system is set to scale factor of 1. The next step is to take a look at our unit settings. So to change these, pick the bar next to units. And here we can go through and set everything how we want it to display in the field. So for this example, we're going to pick US survey feet for our height and our distance and grid coordinates. We want our angles to be in degrees, minutes, seconds. However, we can also choose to be in decimal degrees. By default, we're going to work with azimuths, but if we wish to work in quadrant bearings, we can select this box to have our angles be in quadrant bearings versus azimuths. For this example, I'm going to leave it set to azimuth, so I'm going to uncheck the box. Working with S-series total stations, having the temperature and pressure set to the proper units is critical as it affects the PPM value that's applied to our distance measurements. So we're going to make sure we have Fahrenheit and our pressure is set to inches mercury. Our grade, we can use rise to run, run to rise, angle and percent. I'm going to select rise to run. We have some different area options such as meters, miles, international feet, survey feet, acres and hectares. And lastly, for our volume, we have international yards, U.S. survey yards, acre feet, and U.S. acre feet. Page two, this is our distance display, how many decimal points we want to see. Since I'm using a total station, that's very precise. Maybe I want to leave this set to three decimal places. Coordinates, maybe I want to see four. Area, I'm not too concerned. I might just leave it to one. 
volumes, I might leave it to one as well. Lastly, you can see some angle display settings, lat long, whether it's degrees, minutes, seconds, or decimal degrees, coordinate order, station display. One thing to note here is to make sure this coincides with the units uh, that you're selecting for your distance and horizontal measurements. So if we're using US survey feet, typically we're going to use 10 plus 00, and if we're using metric, we're going to use 1 plus 000. Pick accept to store the changes. The next setting down is linked files. If we pick the bar next to linked files, it says none. You can see right now there are no files in here. Linked files are basically a way to link other jobs or files such as a text file or a CSV file that contains points that need to be accessed by the current job but not imported. So as an example, if I have a linked file with 100 points and I link it to my project, for example, if I set up on one point and backside another from the linked file, I'm accessing two out of the 100 points in that file. What that means is I still have access to the other 98 points left over. However, only the two points that I actually access and use will be copied into my database. Linked files are very handy to have access to control data, but to not have to import the whole data set and have extra points in your project that, that may be unnecessary. Also make note that the linked files and the jobs need to be in the same folder as the current job. So as we looked at earlier when I created the subfolder for my project, if I want to link any files and I want them to show up in this screen by default, they need to be in that example one folder I created. If they're not, I can pick the add button and go out and browse for them. The next setting is active map. In active map, you can see I have no files in here. However, active map lets me set per my job if I want a file to be displayed in the map screen. I can also do this manually in the map screen once my survey is started. However, if I want to do this through the job settings and make it a template, so then every job I create with this template moving forward will have the file in the map screen, I can do so. One thing to note is the map screen can display the following file types. We can work with an AutoCAD DXF file, an ESRI shape file, an RXL alignment file, an RXL road file, and a digital terrain model in either a .dtm or .ttm file format. The next one down is feature code library. So if we wish to use a feature code library when we collect our data, we can select one from a list. These would have to be copied to the system files folder on your Trimble Access data collector. If we wish not to use a feature code library, we can simply pick none on the bottom and it'll take us back and you can see none will display here. Now we want to move on to page two. Page two we have Kogo settings. So if I pick the bar next to Kogo settings, you see I have some different things I can change here. The first thing is distances. If I look at the pull down for distances, I can choose between grid, ellipsoid, and ground. So what these settings can do is if we wish to obtain a computed distance between the point coordinates, select grid as the Kogo distance setting, even if ground coordinates are specified. Ground distance is the ellipsoid distance at the average height above the ellipsoid, whereas grid is the computed distance between pairs of points on the projection, whether the projection is at grid or at ground level. So if I want distances between the coordinates of my points, I'm going to select grid. I also have some grid coordinates settings here, I have a weight exponent setting, magnetic declination setting, and an averaging setting if I want to use weighted or unweighted calculations. Sea level ellipsoidal correction, if I'm working in skill factor only, we can leave that on. And lastly, we have advanced geodetic, and this can be checked on. This just gives us some extra options when we're doing things like resections or transformations. So we'll hit accept to continue. The next setting down is additional settings. If we pick this, we can choose to use Description 1 and Description 2. What this allows us to do is when we're measuring a point and we have our point name, our feature code box, we'll have an additional Description 1 box and an additional Description 2 box. And this lets us key in some notes or maybe use um, these boxes as um, some attribute information and things like that. And when downloaded in the Trimble Business Center, this information is visible and accessible and also um, reportable and exportable. So it's just some additional um, boxes that we can use to add additional information or notes if we need to. The add to CSV file, if we enable this and we have a CSV file created on our 
um, data collector, preferably in our job folder where our job is, we can have it add the points that we measure to that CSV file that we specify in this box. Pick accept to store and then we have the media file settings. If I select this box, this is for controllers that have cameras and if you wish to take a picture in the field of maybe a point or a control point or a point of interest, we can have this tag to the point as a media file and we have just some settings on how we want to tag this and then also we can geotag the images with a location as well and have those images be uh, located relative to our position. We can go ahead and accept that. And then lastly, there's reference, description, operator, and notes boxes that we can just key in information such as who ran the instrument that day, maybe the job number, uh, description of the project, and things like that. We can hit enter. What we want to do here now is go back to page one, just look over everything and make sure it looks okay. Go to page two, double check everything, it looks good. Lastly, to create the job, we're going to hit accept down in the lower right hand corner. And now you can see I'm back in my general survey screen. And notice up on the top it's saying my job is in the example one folder because of the slash and my job name is example one. And that concludes our tech talk on creating a conventional or total station job in Trimble Access. We hope that you found this beneficial and will join us again next time. Thank you.